Hello Libra. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is your weekly reading. This is for the week of April 9th through 15th. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. All right. Very important to, to hit the like button and um, hit the notification bell too so you don't miss the next reading. All right. Now this is going to be a general reading and we're just going to get right to it. First card, Ace of Discs. Beautiful card. Lovely energy. Um, there is something... I think manifesting for you this week. I think there is something that I feel by the end of the week, you're going to be holding it in your hand. You're going to be able to look at it, taste it, touch it, smell it, feel it against your skin. Okay. It is something tangible. Um, I think you're the type of person that is always kind of looking for that. You know, I think when you begin anything, when you start something, when you have that kind of spiritual impulse, that idea, you always see it through to the end. You know, you're not somebody that starts a project and gives up. No, when you start a project, you're really going all the way because you want to see the finished product at the end, right? So you don't do anything kind of half-assed. You, you seem to, more often than not at least, follow through with your plans, follow through with your commitments, with your ideas, right? You bring things from the abstract, from the idea, from thought to manifestation. That's just how you do it. That's how you roll. Um, but what are you working on this week? What is this thing that you, maybe you've been working on it for a long time. I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, you know what? Mystery card. Let's do the mystery card. And the mystery card, we are going to set aside. We're not going to look at it until the very end. And, um, you know, hopefully this will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. All right. So please stick around until the end there. Uh, now we can find out what else is going on this week. What is this project that you're working on? What is there kind of, uh, is there an obstacle? Is there something in your way? What is preventing things? Well, I feel like there's been a delay. You know, I feel like this is something, like I said, you've been working on it for a long time. And there has been a stalling. There has been something that just hasn't worked out. I think... Maybe this week you're going to experience this little bit of delay. Maybe this is a lack of motivation. Maybe this is something that, um, you know, you're just, you're having trouble finishing it. You know, you're having trouble really getting it to that finish line, right? Um, maybe this is kind of the, the biggest, the most major thing that you've ever attempted. And it's just happening a little bit slower than you expected. And I think that is a little bit demotivating. Okay. Um, we're going to look at the, the impulses beneath the surface. We're going to look at what this whole situation kind of rests on. And then we have a wheel of fortune. So it is something that you feel is meant to be, you know, this is something that is like literally in the cards for you. We got the wheel of fortune. I think this is something, I think it is the most major thing that you've ever attempted. I think it is life changing. I think that your future really depends on it. Your sense of destiny, of meaning, of just fulfillment is resting upon uh, this idea that this is meant to be. This is, this is destined to happen for you. Okay. So I feel like um, that's pretty heavy, you know. I feel like that's a lot of uh, pressure, a lot of responsibility. I feel at the same time, like, you know what's going to happen eventually. So there's, there's no rush, right? I mean, I can, I don't have to really bust my ass too hard right now because it's definitely going to happen. So I can kind of chill and relax, right? I feel like that's a little bit of idleness. That's a little bit of um, being too sure of the outcome that we maybe are losing. Like, like I said, it's a little bit demotivating. But it's almost like uh, de-energizing. It's almost like you're just like, okay, I could rest now. I don't need to, I don't need to worry about it because it's, it's guaranteed. Well, if you're a follower of this channel, you know that nothing is guaranteed. I mean, I'm sure you know that anyway. But I tend to say that a lot in these kinds of situations because it would be easy for us to just assume that everything is predetermined, the end is already written, so we can just do whatever we want because we know how the story is going to end, right? 
Uh, that may be true. I don't know. It may be true. But we still need to make decisions. We still need to do the work. We still need to eat and drink and get rest and take care of our responsibilities. Um, because I think most of us, maybe most of us, want to at least enjoy the reading, enjoy the, the book that we're reading, right? We know how the story ends, sure, but we want to enjoy the trip, right? We want to have a good time getting there. Um, so I feel like there needs to be, there it is. I was going to say, I, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of a wake up. There needs to be something that just kind of brings you back to that motivation, gets you charged up, gets you fired up again. I should have finished speaking before I laid the tower card down because then it would have been a little bit more dramatic. Um, but this is exactly what we need. We need this kind of a wake up call. We need something. We need the, the thunder and lightning outside to strike a little bit close to our bedroom window so that we can wake up from our slumber and get back to work, you know? So I feel like you're, you're kind of in need of this, of a tower moment, right? Uh, this, this tower essentially is, is what you're working on. This is your project. Um, it, it's not going to build itself, you know? This tower to heaven that we're working on, this kind of triumph of your life, it's not going to just magically appear. You've got to do the work. And yes, you know how the story ends, but you still have to, you know, do the work to get there, you know? Um, so what is that event going to be? What is that wake-up call going to be? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. There may be a P-named person involved here. Um... I don't know if someone close to you, if their first or last name begins with the letter P. Um, it's not Paul, my name. It's not me. Um, but I feel like there's somebody close to you that maybe maybe has a stake in this with you. Maybe is, um, is somehow not a partner, but... Somebody who kind of has to deal with you. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be offensive. But somebody that has to uh, um, endure these periods of intense activity and then this current period of just kind of um, being a little bit idle, right? And I think that they're almost getting a little frustrated and they just want things to hurry up, right? Like, hurry up and finish this thing, you know? And I think they're doing it, I think they feel that way because they, um, they're supportive of you, because they know that this is what you really want, and they're trying to uh, motivate you, but the way that they motivate you might be a little bit, a little bit abrupt, right? Kind of like this tower energy. But this may not be that person that's going to be the wake-up call. Um, it could be one of those situations where you think that's the wake-up call, right? Somebody kind of comes into your room and says, hey, get up. And you think, oh, that's, now I'm awake. A few seconds later, um, you know, there is just something else. You know, I, I don't want to say like an explosion or like a crack of lightning or just like some kind of thundering, booming voice or something that like, oh, that's the wake up call, you know? So what we feel is the, the impulse that we need is really small and kind of powerless compared to what the really large um, uh, kind of announcement is going to be. I'm almost expecting an Eon or Judgment card here, right? Um, so you feel, it's like you feel a little tremor and you think, oh, that was it. No, the big one's coming, you know? And I'm not trying to be, um, you know, too like destructive or, or dire or anything, but um, I feel like there is the wake up call. Okay. And I don't know what form that's going to take. And I'm speculating by, by saying that it is uh, a person that's close to you, that P-name person. Um, these cards jumped out. Let's see what these cards are revealing to us. Well, these are some nice court cards. Um, let's go ahead and keep that one over here, this Magus Mercury card. I like this card. This can be our kind of patron card for the rest of the reading, because I feel like this wake-up call may be actually coming through um, 
a couple of these people. It feels like there may be more than one person around you. I don't know if you if you live with your family or you have, um, you know, if there's a lot of people that you live with or if you have a large family. Um, I feel like there's a fire sign and an air sign, younger people. Maybe these are children, grandchildren, uh, younger siblings or something. But I almost feel like there is a commitment to them that there is there is a uh, responsibility to these people, you know? And these are kind of, these are the people that are above and forward in your consciousness right now, right? So the fire energy is, is right above everything on the path of the dove, okay? So I feel like these young people um, are who you are, you, you keep them consciously in mind. It's almost like this is why you're doing this. This is what your success is for. Like it's not just yours. I think it's for, for your family as well, okay? And the way forward also with these young, younger people, the way forward in the situation is to remember why you're doing this, right? Because um, again, it's not just for you, but your success, your creation of this success is for them too, okay? And we have this mercury energy. Now, this mercury energy is really that voice that says, oh, we know how the book's going to end. Let's just go play. Let's relax. Let's chill. We don't need to worry about it right now, right? This mercury energy is also that ability that you have to go the other way, to focus, right? It's like you, you um, have focused so widely that you're just like, I don't need to really do much. I can just relax. I can do kind of whatever I want right now. You also have the ability to turn the focus the other way and really narrow it down, right? Really pinpoint it and get this thing done, you know? It's... um. It's a real ability that you have. And at the very beginning, I said that you have a almost abnormal ability to take an idea and follow through to manifestation, right? I think that in your, in your life, you've always been good at that. It's you, you always have that follow through, right? The things that you begin, you complete, right? And I think this is no different except for the fact that it's taking a little bit longer. And this is that big one. This is that big idea, okay? It could be, it could be that this tower in the back here is really this um, this flash of of this this project, the real breakthrough that you've had, you know, um, that set you off on this journey, doing this whatever this really big work, very important work that you're doing now. So this tower event could be something that has already happened that set you off on this current path, okay? I also think that this is the wake-up call that you are going to be needing. Uh, it is that thunder and lightning outside your bedroom window that's going to wake you up in the middle of the night and tell you you got to get moving, you know? Or this is the little tremor that's telling you, hey, the big quake is coming. You better get moving, all right? I don't mean this literally. Uh, and I feel like that's going to be the prompting that you need. That's going to be the wake up that you need to laser focus your mind, your will, your intention, and start getting this work done. Because again, I think it is the biggest work of your life. It has tremendous potential, tremendous uh, implications. And I also feel like there are other people that this is for, that this is going to benefit. I think it's something that is... Um, generational you know i think it's something that you're able to pass on to your kids your grandkids your great grandkids all the way down the generations i feel like this is something lasting because we don't want to lose sight underneath all of this the treasure you know the the ace of pentacles here it kind of got covered up by all of these other cards you know but that's really what we're working on let's focus on getting that established you know Let's focus on getting this work completed. Now, we know the way forward is through this wake-up call and uh, remembering kind of why we're doing this and, and who we're doing this for, besides our, our own fulfillment, you know. Um, but then what is the uh, what is the general energy? Yeah, it just it feels like two cards. Uh, Ace, of, Ace of Wands. So the Ace of Wands really is this inexhaustible energy. 
So I think the wake up call, um, whatever it turns out to be, and this, you know, this refocusing of your powers is really going to pay off because I feel like this is motivation. This is really some, some really high octane gas in your gas tank, you know. I think that is the fuel for your future, for your work, and this is an inexhaustible energy that's going to take you from here to the finish line. You're on the straightaway now, okay? We're on the path of the serpent. We're on the straightaway. So we're headed to that finish line, and I think that you are going, um, you're opening up the throttle, right? Pedal to the metal. A lot of car analogies today. Uh, the pedal is to the metal with that fiery ace of wands there. Your environment well, you got that four of wands, more fire energy. But the four now is saying that, look, we're going to be, we are on the final stretch. We are on the straightaway. This is the kind of, um, this is the, the run to the finish line. And you are going to be completing this work. Okay, this is a four. It's showing the establishment of this fiery energy in the physical world, right? So you don't, you're not just spinning your wheels. You're actually making progress. You're putting things in place. You're putting the final touches on stuff. You're resolving any uh, lingering issues. You are this close to manifesting, right? And I think your environment is going to be very supportive of that. I think that you need to surround yourself with people, with objects, with energies, with talismans, anything that is assisting you in this work, right? Surround yourself with these motivating uh, images, um, sights and smells and, and, you know, anything that will empower you, that will keep you focused. You know, like little mnemonic devices, right? Uh, little symbols of the work and of the implications of the work and of the way to move forward. Just little reminders, almost like uh, you really got to put sticky notes everywhere that just remind you what you're supposed to be doing right now because you've got this laser focus. And if this laser focus gets tweaked a little bit, it's going to be laser focused on something else, right? So we kind of have to keep it calibrated, right? And I think the four of wands is that calibration. Now, next card, I can feel the energy really heating up here. The next card we have is the uh, ace of swords, and it's in the position of your fears, worries, and concerns, right? So I think there's going to be a moment where you maybe question things, and this maybe is a little bit of doubt, right? Because the Ace of Swords represent, it represents absolute truth. You know for certain this is what you're doing. This is what you're accomplishing. This is for you. This is your destiny. This is, there is no doubt at all. But for a moment, I think maybe you're going to doubt that certainty. Okay? And that's the concern. The concern is that your will may waver, that your certainty, that your resolve, that your truth may um, not be the absolute truth that you, that you thought it was. I think that's the opposite. I think that is just your mind, your ego may be doing one last ditch effort to kind of throw things off. But you're this ace of swords. You're maintaining your focus. This is, this is really the laser focus this is the weapon of Mercury in this case. Usually it's the wand, right? Well, we've got the Ace of Wands. We've got Mercury's wand here. Mercury also needs a sword to cut down the doubt, to cut through any confusion, to cut through anything that is trying to push us off of our path, to cut down anything that is threatening our laser focus, our calibration, right? So Mercury definitely needs that sword at times. I don't think it's going to be a huge obstacle, but that is your concern, right? Well, now some more cards are jumping out of the deck. So let's take these in the order that they came. First one is that justice or adjustment card. This really is your fate. This is your karma. This is, I think, the guarantee that uh, the actions that you're taking now are leading you to the last chapter in that book. I think you're almost at the last page, right? I feel like with the the Ace of Swords here, it's almost like you are now being given the opportunity to maybe write that last chapter yourself, right? We know how it's going to end. We know this is the last chapter, then the book's going to be shut on it. Um, but you're given the opportunity to 
embellish, to write your own story a little bit for this last chapter. How is it going to go down? Because it feels like the result of all of this is already known. It's already like in the cards, so to speak. You know, you already know exactly what the implications of this are. And now it's just a matter of you um, kind of deciding on how you're going to enjoy this last push to the finish line, right? On this straightaway. Um, you're kind of, uh, you know, you're going into the end zone. What is your, your end zone dance going to be, you know? So it's, it's really a, 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 um, an absence of doubt, an absence of questioning. This is as close to a guarantee, I think, as you'll get, right? Um, but it's still the, the satisfaction, the uh, experience of it is going to be in direct proportion to the amount of effort and work that you put into it, right? And I think that's why it's important now to kind of wake up and realize that we're on the straightaway and we want to get to the finish line um, as quickly, as strongly, as beautifully as possible because the amount of effort that you're putting in is the amount of satisfaction that you're going to get out of it. Yeah, the ending of the book may be guaranteed. You, you already know how the story ends and what the results are going to be, but how's that going to feel, right? What is that really going to, uh, to be like, that experience? Let's do a couple more cards. Well, we've got these two really wonderful cards, the six of swords. This is showing that this whole time you have really had a, a perfect plan for this. You know, I think that whatever you're working on, whatever this huge kind of life goal that you're meeting now, I think it is something that you've been working on for a long time. I think you've always been very organized. You've always planned it out. It's always kind of been in the back of your mind that this is how it's going to go down at some point. You know, so I think you've really, you've been able to maintain focus. I think just now, as we are approaching the straightaway, there's this little bit of idleness, right? I almost want to say laziness, but it's not laziness. It's just a little bit of just like, okay, I know I've only got a little bit further to run, but I'm going to sit here and catch my breath anyway for a minute, you know, but we need that thunderclap to keep us going, right? To wake us up and now's not the time to rest. We're on the straightaway. We're almost at that finish line. And the nine of cups here, I think this is the experience that you're going to have because of the amount of effort and love and intention that you're putting into this. The satisfaction is going to be tremendous, right? This is probably the most satisfying card in the entire tarot deck, the nine of cups, right? This is pure and utter happiness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual fulfillment and satisfaction. Uh, words don't do it justice. This is the, the pinnacle of your satisfaction from this. So I, I feel like this is what you're going to be experiencing. This is the level of intensity and pleasure and beauty and joy that you want out of this. Okay, and I think you're going to get that. Uh, let's look at the mystery card now. Because I want to see what ties all of this together. You know, what is really going to bring this home? Um... We've already had that tower energy. I wonder if this is going to be the death card. I know that seems pretty heavy, right? Maybe it seems a little morbid. I think the death card would be, um, well, maybe not the death card, because I think the death card would show more about this being like crossing the finish line, and then you, it's kind of like, um, you know, you've you've started over. You've, you've um, not really a building of something, right? But like a, a getting rid of something so that you have... A new vista open to you. And I don't think that's quite what's going on. I feel like there's something accumulating, right? There's something that's being built now. It's not about starting over or about a rebirth or something. This is about a uh, progress and a growth into maturity. Okay. So maybe not death, maybe devil energy. Maybe this is going to be some devil energy. I can see that. Um, the final push to the summit of the mountain, you know, like you're just, you're, you're almost at the top of Everest. And I think that's where most, most people turn back. I watch a lot of those mountain climbing shows, like the Everest show. It seems like people get like just a, just a few hundred yards from, from the summit. And that's when they run out of steam. That's when they, they just say, I'm going to sit down and rest. You can't sit down and rest when you're that close to the summit because you'll never get up again, you know? 
And maybe this isn't that serious, okay? But I think at times it feels that way. So we need to continue climbing up the mountain. Now's not the time to sit and rest. We're only a few hundred yards away. I think devil energy. Because this goat energy is pushing through. This goat energy uh, thrives at these altitudes, right? And this is the ambition. This is the pushing through any kind of um, pain or inertia or laziness or lack of focus or anything at all that is urging you to just sit down and rest. Now's not the time to sit down and rest. We started with this tower energy. Uh, as the, you know, the tower energy is kind of like that thunderclap that wakes that goat up and the goat continues climbing up the mountain, right? Starts to kind of scurry and run faster even. So I'm thinking devil energy. What about you? Let's see. There it is. There's the devil energy. So this really is um, the sort of will and determination that you have. This is your ability to climb the last few hundred yards up Mount Everest, even though every muscle in your body aches, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're tired, um, but there's only a few hundred yards to go. And this is that last bit of that little something extra to get you to the finish line, right? This is digging down into your reserves of your reserves, right? This is not your spare tank. This is the this other spare tank. This is just what's left in the um, the fuel line, you know. And this is the last bit of that little something extra to get you there. I'm very excited for what you've got going on. I hope you leave me some comments and let me know what this kind of thing is for you. Um, also, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. All right, that's. That's very important. That'll help this channel out a great deal, and I appreciate you. Okay, We're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, please click on the link that's right up here, and you can have access to all of the extended readings. Uh, this was your weekly reading April 9th through April 15th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.